and uh, kind of goes along with what I'm speaking about this morning. Uh, quite a few years ago when uh, we were in Montreal, we were going to a rally that was taking place in the city of Rimouski. It was on a Saturday. Now, Rimouski is about a six-hour drive from Montreal, Pastor Steve. Six hours drive. And so uh, Rimouski had a, a brand new church plant that was just starting out. And so uh, our church in Montreal, we were going to go and uh, visit with them and have a rally service with them on a Saturday. Our church in Montreal, we had a big Sunday school bus that we use on Sundays to pick up children. It was a big school bus, similar to your school bus, Pastor Steve, a big, large one. So uh, when we would go to rallies or camp meetings or conventions, a lot of times we'd fill up the Sunday school bus and uh, all the people would get on the bus and we'd go to these uh, different functions, church functions. And so uh, here we were, we were going to encourage this church in Ramouski. Now, again, Ramouski is a six-hour drive from Montreal. So we're gathering together and uh, got on the bus. We had to leave nice and early because, you know, we're going to go there, have the rally after service. We're going to come back and, uh, of course, have service again tomorrow morning. So uh, we were gathering together. And uh, between Ramouski and, I guess, also uh, Ramouski and Montreal, about the halfway point is uh, Quebec City. So we drove about three hours. We stopped in Quebec City, and the bus driver told us, all right, we've got about a half hour. Have your bathroom break. Uh, get a snack. And then it's another three hours on to Ramouski, so this is our break. Everybody get off the bus, everybody uh, do what you have to do, and then we're going to continue on on our journey. Now, Pastor Steve, you know that there's always that one individual that takes such a long time in the bathroom. I don't know why, but that individual, you know, they're going to be fixing their hair, they're going to be fixing their outfit, they're going to be fixing their face, and there's always that one person in the crowd that takes so much time inside of the washroom, we don't know why. Don't know what in the world that that person is doing inside there, but we had a young lady by the name of Jeanette. And Jeanette could spend so much time in the washroom before service. You know, Jeanette would be inside the wash. I don't know how long. Anyways, this was Jeanette. We love her. And so uh, we got off the bus. Everybody went in. Everybody, you know, got their snack. We did our bathroom break. We got back on the bus. I mean, we're in a hurry. We're rushing because we got to get on there to service. Another three hour drive. Got back on the bus and we're driving. And about an hour and an hour and a half into our journey, Brother Dolu, somebody piped up and said, hey, where's Jeanette? <laughs> Man, we've already gone an hour from Quebec City. <laughs> there ain't no way we can turn around and head back to Quebec City now. We're on our way to Rimouski. And so, Pastor Steve, we had to keep on driving. We went to Ramouski, we had our rally service in Ramouski, and we had church inside of Ramouski, and then we got in, we came back, and when we came to the same rest stop in Quebec City, we picked up Jeanette <laughs> and brought her back to Montreal. <laughs> yes, praise God. Amen. The title of our message today is entitled, A Day's Journey Without Him. A day's journey without him. Praise God. And we'll try one more time to see if we can get our PowerPoint going. And if this works, that'll be great. My uh, scripture reading is in the book of Luke, chapter number 2, verse number 42 to 47. Luke, chapter number 2, verse 42 to 47 is our reading today. And it says this, And when he was 12 years old... They went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feasts. And when they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it, but supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances." So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now it was so that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. Praise God. 
I especially want to draw your attention to verse number 44. And verse number 44 says, But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. Praise God. And again, our title slide, A Day's Journey Without Him. A day's journey without him. Could we pray together? Let's ask the Lord God to help us this morning as we get inside of his word. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you again today, Lord, for the reading of your word. Thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We thank you so much, dear Jesus, God, that we can gather together here today, Lord Jesus, and God, that we can worship you, that we can call upon your great name, and Lord God, we just pray that you would speak to us in this hour, Lord God. Speak to our hearts, Lord God. Challenge us, Lord Jesus. God, anoint me, the speaker. And anoint the ears and hearts of every listener, dear God. Let the word of the Lord fall upon good ground inside of our lives and bring forth fruit unto everlasting life. I pray that nobody would be offended at your word today, but God, that your word would challenge us, that your word would change us today and make us into the image of Jesus Christ. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory because we ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. God bless you today. In our introduction, the story is significant because it gives us the only glimpse into our Lord's life prior to his ministry at 30 years of age. We don't really have a very lot recorded about Jesus' life uh, before uh, his earthly ministry. Just this one story that we have when he was 12 years old. And of course, his family now had traveled from Nazareth to Jerusalem. It was their custom every year that they went to the city of Jerusalem for the Passover uh, to uh, celebrate the Passover feast. And so uh, as they would go to Jerusalem, it would not only be Jesus traveling together with his own family, usually they would travel together in a large group, a large caravan. There would be neighbors and relatives and friends and uh, be a large group that would travel. Pastor Steve mentioned that uh, the journey between Jerusalem and uh, Nazareth was about 130 kilometers. So about the same uh, distance as us traveling from Edmonton to Red Deer. Amen. Sister Rachel, you can imagine walking from Edmonton to Red Deer. That's what they did to be able to go to the temple and to celebrate the Passover. And so there'd be a large group and a large gathering that they were uh, going together. And so uh, it has some wonderful lessons for us who, like Mary and Joseph, find the Lord missing from their lives. Praise God. You know, isn't there uh, that story that comes out every Christmas? Everybody watches uh, a wonderful Christmas movie, Home Alone. And I uh, remember the little boy, uh, you know, he's sent to his bedroom the night before. The next day, you know, they're all gathering together. There's a mad dash and a mad shuffle because they're catching a plane to go to France. And uh, they get on their plane and they're all rushing. Everybody's all together. And then, you know, somewhere along the journey, all of a sudden somebody says, hey, Where's Kevin? (laughs) They forgot Kevin back at home. You know, uh, don't, uh, you know, uh, blame Mary and Joseph here. Again, uh, you know, there was a lot of crowd. There was a lot of shuffle. They had other children besides Jesus at this time as well. Uh, Jesus had brothers and sisters that were born after he was born. And so uh, here we find Mary and Joseph have left Jesus behind. And are there times inside of our lives when we assume that Jesus is near to us, only to find out that we have left him behind somewhere inside of our journey. Let's go on to point number one. Point number one is leaving without Jesus. Leaving without Jesus. As we go through life, there are times that we set out on our path, and sometimes we can forget the most important thing. As we set out upon our path or as we set out upon our journey, are there times when we can forget the most important thing? A couple of years ago, my son went for a music festival in California. Him and a couple of his buddies, they were going to the Coachella Music Festival. That happens every year. And so uh, him and his friends, they were so excited. Uh, First time going to this festival. And so uh, one of his friends has some family that lives in San Francisco. So what they were going to do, they were going to fly from Edmonton to San Francisco, spend a couple of days, uh, you know, visiting or touring San Francisco, and then they were going to go on to this music festival. And so they had gone, and I'll never forget, a couple of days into his journey, Pastor Steve, I get a call on my cell phone. Dad, 
I left the tickets for the music festival on my bureau downstairs in my bedroom. <laughs> the very thing that they had gone to California for, the very you know, important festival that they were there for, he had forgot his tickets on his bureau inside of his bedroom. Brother Dolu, I had to run, grab those tickets. I went to Federal Express. <laughs> Thank God for FedEx. Get them there the next day. Put them in a Federal Express envelope, and he had the tickets the next day, and they were able to go on. Sometimes we can forget the most important thing inside of our journey. Can you say praise the Lord? Verse number four says, but they supposing for him to have been in their company they had departed and had gone on a day's journey. They supposed that Jesus was still there. You know, he's there somewhere inside of the caravan. I know he's maybe, you know, a couple of carriages down. Sister Rachel, maybe he's on the donkey there with his friend Judah or James. I, I know he's here somewhere. I haven't seen him, but I, I'm pretty sure he's around here somewhere. You know, but yet they have gone a full day's journey, leaving him behind. Brothers and sisters, I want to ask us today, are there times maybe when we go through our day and we go through our journey and uh, maybe we did not take the time to pray, maybe we haven't taken the time to read his word, <laughs> maybe we haven't taken the time to really commune with him, is it possible for us to go a day's journey without him? Thinking that he's there somewhere inside of the background, I know he's there somewhere, but you know, we go through our day. And uh, we go through our journey, and yet we, we didn't take time to pray. And we don't take time to read his word. And we don't take time to really commune with him and spend with him. And uh, we could even go a day's journey without him. One day leads into another day, and then another day leads into another day. Uh, uh, my pastor always used to say, Pastor Steve, seven days without prayer makes one week. Seven days without prayer makes one week, not only W-E-E-K, but W-E-A-K. Amen. If we don't take the time to spend time inside of the presence of the Lord God, then we become weak spiritually as well. And there is something that's missing inside of our lives. I want to ask you this question. Was there a time when you walk with the Lord every day? You read his word and you talked with him in prayer. But now it has been a long time since you were truly close to him. Is there a separation now that exists between you and the Lord Jesus Christ because you have left him behind somewhere inside of your journey? There used to be a time when I used to pray. There used to be a time when I was, you know, reading his word. There used to be a time when I was so fervent and I was so on fire for the Lord, but yet I found that something now has come inside of the way. And yet I find now that, uh, you know, that closeness that I had with the Lord is not there any longer. Amen. Sometimes our hearts can become proud. Our hearts can become self-sufficient, comfortable, and uh, God just becomes an afterthought to us. And sometimes Jesus can get lost inside of the shuffle so that he is not really there with us any longer inside of our journey. I know the Lord said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. I will be with you always, even unto the end of the age. But brothers and sisters, there's sometimes when we leave him behind inside of our journey. There are some times when we forget him behind inside of our journey. Remember, the Bible talks about Samson, that Samson had shook himself just like he did at times before, and he thought the Spirit of the Lord was going to be there just like it was at times before. But Samson had fooled around inside of his commitment with the Lord. You know, Samson had played around so many times, and so he had lost that a place that he had once inside of the Lord. And so he thought he would be able to just shake himself like he did at times before. But the Bible says he did not know that the Spirit of the Lord God had departed from him, leaving without Jesus. Our second point is looking for Jesus. Looking for Jesus. In the text, in verse number 44, it says, And they sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. Mary and Joseph still assume that Jesus was somewhere there inside of the group. But when they hadn't seen him or heard from him in a while, they began to look for him. Hey Amen. I'm sure that he's around here somewhere. He was here just a couple of, didn't we just see him a few minutes ago? And so they began to look for him and they began to search for him. Where is he? Where exactly could he be? 
There's a scripture verse in Jeremiah 29 and 13, and it says, and you will seek me, and you will find me when you search for me with all of your hearts. Praise God. You will seek me, and you will find me when you search for me with all of your hearts. Brothers and sisters, we will find him when we search for him with all of our hearts. I want to ask us a question here today. Are we seeking the Lord God with all of our hearts today? Yes, there's a lot of times when we get, uh, you know, so busy in, you know, the living our life, and uh, we get busy with so many things and so many cares of this life and so on that it's very easy for Jesus to get lost inside of the shuffle somewhere. He's in behind there somewhere. The Bible says that God is not far from any one of us if we just begin to feel after him. Amen. God is not far from any one of us, but when we begin to seek after him with all of our hearts, draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. If you're feeling like there is a separation there, if you're feeling like, yes, there is a little bit of a gap there. I don't really feel his presence the way that I once did. Then brothers and sisters, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. Today is the day, amen, for us to make that commitment. Today is the day for us to seek him with all of our hearts, amen. And so it's so important for us to take stock every now and then. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, the Apostle Paul offers this injunction and he says, examine yourselves. Everybody say, examine yourselves. Say it a little bit louder. Examine yourselves. You that are watching on the internet, say, examine yourselves. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, examine yourselves whether you've been in the faith, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. It's so important for us every now and then to take a self-examination and take stock of our lives and take stock of our, our, uh, our revelation or our relationship, I should say, with the Lord Jesus Christ and to be honest with ourselves and to be honest with the Lord. Amen. Sometimes we can judge others and we can judge other people and so on. But hey, brothers and sisters, we need to examine ourselves and examine our hearts. Old song that we used to sing, not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Amen. God, search my heart today. Amen. God, look at my relationship today. I do not want to leave the Lord God behind inside of my journey. Seek him with all of your hearts and you will find him. Ask yourself, when was the last time that I felt the Lord dealing with me about something? When was the last time that his word really spoke to my heart? How long has it been since I shared the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with somebody? Especially in this time of COVID-19, pandemic, and lockdown, where, where we're not able to meet inside of our church services or meet together like we once did and so on. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I just feel like uh, we, we, maybe some people might be losing contact or not connecting with the Lord God the way that we once did. Amen. My heart is saddened and my heart is just grieving and hoping hey, that we are taking the time. Amen. To make sure that our relationship with the Lord God is up to date. Amen. Making sure that we are taking the time. Amen. To spend time in prayer. To spend time inside of his word. There's a lot of other things. Amen. That people are, are you know, getting involved in and looking at and watching uh, online and on TV and so on and so forth. Hey, the most important thing is for us to make sure that our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is up to date. Amen. That we are on fire with him, that we are not leaving him behind somewhere inside of our journey. You will find him where you left him, where you lost him. He will be in the last place that you communed with him and had contact with him. Praise God. You'll find him in the last place that you left him. A couple of years ago, you all know that I am a photocopier by trade. And uh, a couple of years ago, I was packing some things inside of my car, Pastor Steve. I was taking a trip out of town. And so I was throwing a lot of things, a lot of equipment and parts and stuff that I needed on the back seat of my car. I had my cell phone with me, and I set my cell phone on the roof of my car. While I'm packing all these bags and parts and everything inside of the back seat, and I was in a rush... 
And so I jumped inside of my car. Now, I want to qualify this. This was a couple of years ago when the law had not come into effect for holding handheld cell phone inside of your car. So I'm driving down the highway. I'm doing about 100 kilometers an hour down the highway. And all of a sudden, my phone starts ringing. And I can hear my phone ringing, but I don't know where it is. And I'm checking beside my seats. You know, we got one hand on the wheel, and I'm checking in behind, I'm checking underneath the seat. Is it in my pocket? And it's ringing, and it's ringing, and it's ringing. And all of a sudden, I thought to myself, where was the last time that you had it? I had set it on the roof of my car. I kid you not, I'm speeding down the highway 100 kilometers an hour, and the phone had slid back into the roof rack. And the roof rack of my car had caught my cell phone so that it was wedged in between the rack and the roof of my car perfectly well that it did not fall off, even though I was speeding down the highway. And so I thought to myself, I left it on the roof. Of my, I couldn't believe it. And it's ringing. And it's ringing. I pulled the car over. I got out of my car. I looked up. There's my phone there. Got back inside of my car. And I answered my phone. Now, again, this was a time when you were allowed to answer your phone. Hey, man, I need to qualify this. Pastor Ted did not break the law. Hold that straight up. Hey, man, but I want to ask you, where was the last time that you had him? Where was the last time that you left him? Where was the last time that you felt his presence? Where was the last time that you felt the Lord God dealing with your heart? Where was that last time that you really truly felt his presence in a real and a living way? And you felt God speaking to your heart. Amen. Hey, we need to get back to that place where the Lord God's way. Break back to that place where you left him. All right. Our last point is learning from Jesus. Learning from Jesus. In verse number 46, it says, And it came to pass, after three days they found him in the temple. Can you imagine? Three days they were searching for him and looking for him. Amen. Sister Simba, can you imagine three days? You lost your child, and you're searching all over this busy city and this crowded city, and you cannot find him for three days. Amen. But then they found him inside of the temple. Is there not at least some significance in the fact that they found him inside of the house of the Lord God? Amen. That's where they had found him. He was inside the house of the Lord God. Brothers and sisters, when you seek him, you will find him when you search for him with all of your heart. And you can find him inside of the house of the Lord God. Amen. Hey, connecting together with our church family, connecting together with the church body, Body is so vital and it's so important inside of our lives. That's where he was. He was inside of the midst of the temple. The Bible says that he was uh, teaching the teachers, the scribes and the Pharisees and the doctors of the law. He was there and uh, he was sharing the scriptures with them asking questions and answering their questions. And the Bible says they were astonished at this young man's understanding and this young man's teaching and so on. Amen. But he was there inside of the house of the Lord God. Praise God. Uh, we live in a day where church attendance is in rapid decline. Increasingly, people are putting less importance upon being faithful to church. And as believers, the Bible says that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But so much the more, the Bible says, as you see the day approaching, as we come down to the last days, as we see that the coming of the Lord God is coming so soon, then the Bible says, hey, even so much the more, we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. I read a little statistics in a Christian magazine. It's entitled, Pew Magazine. It's a magazine for Christian ministers. Uh, and they said that they took a survey of 35,000 Americans. And of these 35,000 Americans, 71% said that they absolutely believe in God and in the existence of God. But only 39% said that they attend church or they attend worship services on a weekly basis. 71% said yes, they believe in God, but only 39% said that they attend weekly services. Pastor Steve, I don't need to go to church. I pray at home and I read my Bible at home and I watch the television evangelists on TV and so on. So you know what? That's exactly what the enemy wants for you to do. 
The enemy wants for you to be separated from the body. Amen. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you cut yourself off from that vine, amen, the branch cannot live or the vine cannot live except it be attached to that branch. And brothers and sisters, I want to tell you as well too, we need to be connected with our church family. We need to be connected with our church body. You know what? The wolf, that's exactly what he wants to do is to get that sheep off by itself. Amen. To get that sheep away away from the rest of the flock, to get that sheep away from everyone because he knows when he gets that sheep on its own, he'll be able to devour it and he'll be able to destroy it and he will be able to eat. Hey, we need to put a priority upon going to the house of the Lord. We need to, I know that we're not able to meet like we, uh, you know, did in the times past. I don't know when we'll be able to meet together inside of the house of the Lord, but stay connected, brothers and sisters, whether it be on Facebook, amen, whether it be together, we need to stay connected connected and we need to put a priority upon going to the house of the Lord upon fellowshipping one with another that's when we hear God's word that's when God's spirit is able to speak with us that's when God's spirit is able to deal with our hearts I do not want to go a day's journey without him but I need him every day and I need him every hour can you say praise the Lord again today when they found the Lord Jesus, he was not only in the temple, but he was involved in the work of his father. Amen. Can you imagine the, the reaction of that mother when she finally found him inside of the temple? Jesus, Jesus, where have you been? Jesus, why have you dealt with us so? Jesus, you know, what are you doing? Jesus, we've been looking all over for you. And the Bible says, don't you know, Jesus said back to them, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? I must be about my father's business. When they found him, he was inside of the temple and he was about his father's business. Brothers and sisters, hey, we need to be about our father's business as well. Hey, man, we need to plug in. We need to get connected. We need to find our place inside of the body of Christ as well. Hey, man, God did not call you just to warm a bench pew. God did not call you just to warm the seats on Sunday morning. Amen. God did not call you, amen, just to sit on your hands. But I believe that each and every one of us have a ministry. God is calling for each and every one of us to get involved in the body of Christ and in the work of God. Amen. To find our place inside of the body. Maybe you might never come up and preach a message. Maybe you might never sing a special. You might never lead the song service like Angel did today. Amen. Maybe you might never be able to play an instrument or so on. And you say, well, Pastor Steve, then there's nothing that I can do. No, that's so wrong. Amen. There are so many ministries that are there inside of there. Hey, we must be about our father's business. Amen. We must find our place inside of the body of Christ and inside of the work of the Lord God. What is God calling for us to do? If you want to get close to the Lord Jesus, then stay in his presence. Spend time in your life involved inside of the work of the kingdom of God. I don't want to grow cold and apathetic, but I want to stay close to him. Amen. God, help me to get involved in my church. Help me to get involved inside of the body of Christ, to find my place inside of the work of the Lord God. What is God calling for me to do? Hey, God, here I am. Take my life and use me. Let me be used inside of the work of your ministry. I want to be about my father's business. Praise God. The Lord Jesus is in the business of reaching the lost. If you want to stay close to him, then get involved in sharing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to stay close to him, then love his people and serve his church. Praise God. If you want to stay close to the Lord, then get involved. Amen. Get on fire for the Lord God. We need to seek his faith. We need to have a spiritual renewal inside of our lives and say, Lord, I do not want to go a day's journey without you. Praise God. In our conclusion today, there are times when Christians realize that somewhere... And at some point, they have let something come between them and their Lord. Brothers and sisters, it's easy to do. Amen. We are living in the last days. The Bible says in the last days, perilous times will come. Amen. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. The Bible says that the enemy knows that he has but a short time. And so there's so many distractions 
And so many things that the enemy tries to put in front of us that cause for us, amen. And all of a sudden, you know, the Lord becomes lost inside of the shuffle. He gets left behind somewhere and he doesn't take the first place inside of our lives. Can it be relationships? Could be a boyfriend or a girlfriend that begin to come between you and the Lord? Could it be your work? Could it be making money? I understand and I know we've got to work. Hey, we've got to go out and we've got to make a living and so on. But you know what? The Bible also says we need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. I don't want for my work to become my God. I don't want to serve the almighty dollar as some people do. Amen. But God, help me to make sure that you are first place inside of my life. Could it be our studies? Amen. Yes, we need to go to school. Yes, we need to get a good education and, uh, and we need to study and so on. Those things are good. But you know what? Sometimes people allow their education to come ahead of God. God gets put on the back burner while they are seeking their education and somewhere he gets lost behind inside of the fray or inside of our busy lives. They have left without their Savior. And now as they look for him inside of their lives, they find that he is missing. For those souls, Mary and Joseph offer a wonderful example. Bible says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and let him return unto the Lord God. For our God, he will abundantly pardon. Seek the Lord God while he may be found. Hey, today is the day of salvation. Not next week, not next month. Pastor Ted, yes, I intend to really, you know, give my life to God, but I, I can't today. I, I'm very busy. I'm, I'm involved in so many things right now. Next week, Karen, next month, you know, uh, in a couple of months from now and so on. So, hey, today is the day of salvation. Now is except seek the Lord God while he may be found. The Bible says, call upon him while he is near. Amen. We might not always have, amen, that opportunity. We might not always have the opportunity like we have right now. Go back to where you left him. Return to that place of closeness and communion, and you will surely find him again. Praise God. There's a scripture verse that I want to read. In our closing, it's uh, Revelation chapter number 2, verse number 1 to 5. Revelation chapter number 2, verse number 1 to 5. It's our final verse of Scripture today. <clears throat> to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil, and that you have tested those who say that they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have had patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Amen. The Lord has so many compliments for this church. You've labored. You've had patience. You cannot bear those that are evil. You've tested those ones that say that they are apostles, and yet you have found that they are false apostles. But he says, nevertheless, I have this against you, in that you have left your first love. Nevertheless, I have this against you, and that you have left your first love. Brother Dolu, I used to misquote that scripture right often. I used to say you have lost your first love. But the Bible doesn't say that you've lost your first love. It says you have left your first love. If you've lost something, that means you don't know where it is. If you lost something, you don't know where you put it down. You don't know where you left. But when you have left something, you know exactly where it is, and you have walked away from it. Jesus said, nevertheless, I have this against you in that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, does there need to be some repentance inside of our lives today? Mary and Joseph, that's exactly what they did. They were heading in one direction. They were heading towards Nazareth. But when they realized that he was not there, they had to turn around and they had to go back to Jerusalem.
Amen. That's what true repentance is all about. Amen. We turn around from the direction that we are going and we go inside of a new direction. That's what true repentance is. Sometimes we're heading inside of one direction and we are leaving the Lord God behind. Today is the day that we need to turn around and we need to go back to that place that the Lord God is calling for our hearts. So I want to go back to that place of the first love. Was there a time when the Lord God was so, uh, you know, on, you were so on fire inside of your, re your relationship with the Lord? Was there a time when you had that passion and that fervency inside of your heart? But now it's not there any longer. Amen. You need to turn away from apathy and turn away from that sleepiness and say, dear God, I want to go back to that place that you are calling for me. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If you've got a hunger and you've got a thirsting inside of your heart, I want you to know that the presence of the Lord God is here inside of this place today. I don't want to go a day's journey without him. Amen. Those of you that are watching from home on the internet today, hey, God's presence is there. God's presence is real. God wants to touch your heart today. God God wants to restore you today. If you will say, Lord God, I don't want to lose my first love. God, I don't want to leave my first love. But Lord God, I want you to be number one inside of my heart. Can we stand together here this morning? Music team, would you come back to the platform today? They're going to lead us inside one more song. We need him every day and we need him every hour, brothers and sisters. Amen. I don't want to walk upon this journey without him. There's an old song that we used to sing that says, let me walk with you, Jesus. Don't ever leave me alone, for without you I could never, no, never make heaven my home. Praise God. Lord, we need you every 